So we are live with this panel. In this panel, we will be talking about entering the tech industry with these guys uh, here and uh, whoever is watching us later or live. Uh, just a reminder, feel free to already drop uh, in the comment section uh, any questions that you might have and we can answer with you right now. So to kick this off, let me introduce myself and then we will do a round of introductions. We're going to say our names, company and what the hell we were doing also before starting uh, to work uh, in the tech industry ourselves. So my name is Esther. I'm working currently as a senior PM at Delivery Hero. And before becoming a PM, I was working as a manufacturing engineer um, uh, in my old days. Uh, Annie, what about you? Sure, I'm Annie Fan. I am currently at Slack, which is part of Salesforce. Before being a product marketer, I was actually in the uh, media and entertainment industry uh, working at Netflix and Sony. Should we pass it on? Sure. I can go next. Uh, I'm Indra Misra. I'm a senior staff PM at build.com. Uh, it's a fintech company uh, helping out small and medium businesses with their uh, financial operation and planning solutions. Previous to build, I used to uh, lead product teams at Twitter, uh, now X, and I started my career uh, at uh, as a software engineer. Mm -hmm for building uh, data center observability solutions for Dell Technologies. Cool, nice, nice. Okay. I'll go next time. I'm, I'm Srikant, I'm working at Microsoft as a senior technical product manager uh, for Teams app. Uh, it is an online collaborating tool like most of us are using on day-to-day -day basis for our, uh, in this hybrid environment. Um, I work as a platform PM who is mostly responsible for the teams uh, uh, for delivering media like audio, video, screen sharing, whatever we are streaming right now. Uh, before PM, uh, I was a software engineer myself for six years, uh, mainly into developing applications related to supply chain uh, uh, companies. Cool. Very diverse backgrounds here already. Uh, maybe let's kick this off talking about uh, the different types of PMs. I already can see a variety on uh, ourselves here, uh, right? Um, so what will be the different types of PM uh, that we can have currently, you know? It might also change how you approach this uh, career change that you are uh, searching for. Ani, I think that you can maybe go first. Sure, I'll answer this a little bit differently. I'm not in product uh, management. Uh, however, as a product marketer, I can tell you there's a lot of variation in what the role actually is, uh, even though the title is very generic. And when you see job descriptions, they're also quite uh, standardized. So uh, from that lens, um, there are multiple types of focuses for a product marketer. You could have someone that I call a, a core product marketer, someone that works really closely to PMs and engineering teams. You're working on building out new solutions, whether that's a physical product or software, and you're constantly working on a go-to-market motion uh, to bring out new uh, solutions, new capabilities, new releases. Uh, to uh, your customers within a tech company. Uh, there are other more general focuses, like uh, for example, some PMs might be focused on growth. So bringing in more and more uh, audiences and customers as opposed to uh, having those customers continue to adopt and renew. So um, that's one example of that. Another example is a focus on content, uh, especially as smaller uh, companies or companies where there aren't that many marketers. As a PM, you might have to wear more hats and you're going to have a more general role because there simply are many needs for marketing from content to growth uh, to sales enablement, et cetera, et cetera. So uh, I would say there's multiple different uh, areas of focus, uh, but for someone that wants to be a more technical product marketer, you're going to focus more on that go-to-market piece. So um, what does it take to understand the market and product fit? Um, where are the opportunities in the marketplace? How do you work with engineering teams and more technical teams and speak their language and also become the advocate for the customer, right? So 
um, a lot of excitement and a lot of variety there in terms of the product marketing space. Cool. This is very interesting. I think that the differences that we have uh, in the different types are, is, I think that the key word that you said is the different focus areas that the company might be wanting at that time. And even the scope uh, requires a more technical or more uh, related to growth or more marketing, uh, marketing uh, uh, specialists or so on. Um, cool, cool. Um, but we also have here around us another type, uh, interesting type, which is not so general. Uh, and I think that you already know that I'm going to point out to you, right, Sirikan? Uh, so maybe if you can share a bit more of like what in a few lines, what uh, does a technical PM does, you know? Sure. Um, e even in technical, there would be like uh, two to three different types. It depends upon where you're actually landing, whether you're landing on the customer focus, you're landing on the UX focus, or you're landing on the platform side, which is me uh, on the back end. Uh, my, my more concentration would be uh, mainly on, on the uh, back end platforms, on you know, how to scale those applications how to uh, survive for the traffic, uh, you know, it, 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 it has more technical, whereas on the customer focus side, you're more worried about what are the customer problems, how we are trying to solve. But my features are basically coming in when some customer PM thinks about a feature and then he comes and talks to our team on building that feature technically. So mm -hmm. my focus will be more on, on the technical aspects uh, 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 of, the, of the feature. So mm -hmm. that, that is a different kind of a role I play. But but being on this side, you also have to understand your partners, which would be our customer PM. So you are basically a PM for a PM team. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you are understand your customer would be your partner team, not the uh, you know the end customer. But ultimately, it's end customer. But your your more focus would be on your partner PMs. Yeah, I would. Uh, uh, I'm also a platform PM like Srikant. I lead the data and AI teams at Bill. So as Srikan said, we are the enablers for uh, the customer facing teams. So whatever is needed from them to help them increase their velocity to deliver external customer features, uh, we enable them to do that at scale and not worry about infrastructure, scale and AI needs. So we are kind of building a paved path for them to, to high velocity and high scalable solutions for external customers. And Customers is a very broad term, and I would say internal customers, which we have to deal with, me and Srikant on a day to day, are much more difficult than the external customers because they have access to uh, you and, and the PM and the team much more, and uh, they have uh, more expectations for you. Yep, yep, I completely agree with you on that. I agree 100% on that as well. I think that sometimes maybe the books might talk more about the general roles and uh, responsibilities of a PM. If you go to Marty Kagan, our the Bible, uh, it's more on the general side sometimes, but on the day-to-day -day basis and, some, and in reality, the companies will have a necessity of a multiple um, uh, team, a diverse team uh, in terms of uh, skill sets uh, as well. I completely agree 100% that building internal products is not so sexy sometimes to, you know, post uh, something medium or something like this, uh, but it's way harder when your customers are perhaps on your bi-weeklies or uh, accessing your roadmap uh, on their fingertips. So completely agree with that. Uh, cool. I have one uh, question here, I, which uh, before I think that we move uh, further in our pool of quest, uh, questions here, we do have this uh, interesting one, which is like, okay, how your day-to-day -day looks like, Annie? Yeah, I mean, I would imagine it's similar to what PMs uh, deal with. So my day-to-day -day varies, but it really depends on the rhythm of the project that I'm working on. So for example, when I was focused on marketing a desktop software product, we had releases maybe once a quarter, and those are big releases with something exciting for customers to care about uh, versus moving on into cloud solutions. Um, 
products that tend to happen a lot faster. So then instead of every quarter, it's going to be every two weeks. <laughs> and so a lot of times when you have a roadmap that's very fast uh, that way, um, you might need to figure out like, okay, are most of these bug fixes, how do I even make a bug fix sound exciting or interesting to the customer? How can I give them faith uh, when I'm calling out that the product is imperfect, right? And so these are the things that I think about. Uh, another element to my day is conference planning. Um, in every company I've been in, whether it's small or big, uh, uh, being present, being live in person with people at industry trade shows has been an important part of growing the brand and growing your content, growing your product audience. So there's a rhythm behind that type of planning as well. And so those are the things that tend to um, really dictate my, uh, my work throughout the year. Uh, within the day, it's all kinds of things, right? Like it could be content creation. Uh, it could be working on a uh, roadmap. So understanding um, info from your PMs, what's going on, how has it changed, um, how, why the product was built, the capabilities were built, who were they for, how does it work, how does it not work, how does it compare to other products, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and then the third piece is customer interaction, right? Like, um, so interviewing other customers, seeing um, who your target customer is and understanding like how they're experiencing the product. Um, maybe that also feeds into what they want more from that product as well, like uh, what Shrikanth and um, Angra had already mentioned, right? So there's this whole cycle of customer listening, planning, and going to market, and you just do that over and over again. Um, so the days do vary, but it definitely does depend on um, the flavor of that month or quarter. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Totally. Uh, we do have some more questions uh, popping up. Uh, hey, Swati. Um, she's asking, uh, could I also uh, share a bit more of my role? My role, I would uh, consider right now a delivery hero. I, as a more generalistic one, because I do take care of a central product that all delivery hero is a delivery. Uh, it's in the delivery, uh, the food delivery industry, and we do have a lot of brands globally. And I work on a rider app, so I do on a rider facing user flow that I need to take care of with all these multiple riders across the globe. But I also take care of an internal. Uh, tool that our local managers use to uh, manage the rider fleet in these uh, markets that we do have our brands. Um, so I think that I do take care of a, a multiple uh, and never boring uh, backlog of different problems. Sometimes it's more uh, on the customer experience and the rider experience. Sometimes a I'm taking more into account uh, the business goals that we need to achieve and where we need to drive our vision in the midterm and how we are going to collaborate also with this uh, completely uh, complex product since it is a global product uh, used in 50 countries or over 50 countries. Um, I do have to deal a lot with dependencies internally. So a lot of my day sometimes is talking with uh, internal stakeholders, which means other PMs to make uh, one feature that I want to drive available, or I am supporting another feature that another squad is leading. So working with these uh, regions, stakeholders, uh, taking into consideration the writer and the researchers that we are doing, uh, and also where the business want to go. So I would say that I am, um, Taking care about uh, taking care of a uh, multi lens, I would say, uh, in the position that I am right now, it's very fun. My day, I would say, uh, never boring. Um, cool. I think that we do have another interesting one here, which is how to transit uh, or break break into S platform product manager from software. Uh, development uh, or financial services domain background. I think that we might want to have a good candidate to answer this question, right, Siri? I can, I can, I can take this uh, question. Cool. Um, uh, how to transit uh, it? I, I think the best thing to do is 
find an internal uh, position within your company uh, for a product manager because you know the domain you know the teams uh, and then you can you can judge yourself like uh, what what are your pm skills at that point right so that would be the easiest transition uh, for you to get into break two and and you being in the company the company has uh, and the people around you have some belief in you they understand your skills they know more about you right so that would be the best way to transition into uh, uh, as a as a pm uh, within the same company but but obviously that that not be the case for uh, most of the people maybe that role has a different uh, responsibilities or a different title in the same company because we all know product managers are very different in very company uh, in every company as well as in every team it's it varies right mm -hmm. uh, but the other thing if you want to actually break into get into a new company is start marketing yourself on social media platforms like start blogging you know putting in uh, comments on what do you think about the feature and in all those kind of things and start net networking uh, with the other pms product school is one of the biggest thing i i actually learned stuff from product school when i transitioned from developer into a product uh, product manager so start there uh, if if you get into the in, in your own company then you will you you will know that you like the role or not because initially when you come into product manager you get thrown away into different places <laughs> you, you you will be in a very uh, uh, you know you have to deal with a lot of ambiguous uh, ambiguity right you you have to uh, get through all those things so if you're in the within the same company then you can you know get past these hurdles very easily um, mm -hmm. I'll, I'll probably stop here and maybe andra can uh, jump in and give more context uh, from his perspective uh, yeah great great insight shikant uh, one thing i would like to add is uh, be prepared to answer the question why product and not engineering uh, a lot of times uh, pms who are coming from an engineering background uh, tend to get asked that uh, or, or they have a like people outside have bias that they will get too much into the weeds and try to uh, uh, go into the how rather than the what and the why so I would definitely say if you are trying to make a break into PM, you definitely need to prepare for this question. Uh, otherwise, uh, you will be uh, labeled as an engineer uh, and getting into the weeds, uh, getting into the depth rather than focusing on the larger picture, uh, which is an important skill required for a PM. Uh, so this question, yeah. you need to have your story ready uh, before going out there for interviews. Yeah. Nice. And I see a similar question here from Adam, uh, which is uh, he apparently is struggling to move for a product official product manager role, uh, even though he uh, has uh, extensive experience with project manager and as a PO and, and is for a master. Do you guys think that these uh, tips that you have shared right now from a software developer to break through a PM role, uh, how different they would be if I am doing already like a product ops, maybe a project management uh, role already, but I want to become a PM? What uh, different tips would you also suggest? Yeah, I think the project managers, I can take this one. And uh, I think the project managers, scrum master, product owners, it's a very, uh, uh, I would say, a broad role uh, and depends from company to company. So uh, ideally, when you hear project manager or a scrum master, it's mostly coordination of larger initiatives uh, and working to make sure that the deadlines are being met, the stakeholder management and whatnot. So I would say, and I'm sure uh, Srikant and Annie would agree to this, that we, all of us definitely have some project manager responsibilities in our day to day, but that's not the only thing. So you need to prove your value prop of uh, being more than a project manager uh, to break through into a PM. So you need to understand the problem, the customer pain points, how you are uh, iterating your uh, thinking process how you're organizing the problem statement and uh, uh, weighing your pros and cons and risks involved. 
uh, how are you tracking metrics and whatnot unless you are able to justify this uh, in your interview or your story uh, you would be labeled uh, as a project manager who's only good at coordinating stuff and keeping things running on time and, and milestone uh, deadline driven yeah I think that this getting uh, things done perspective uh, is required in any uh, type of PM uh, role as well, right? So given that you have already committed to something or a deliverable, you will need to like take care of this uh, frequently. So you are going to achieve and deliver it at, let's say by the end of a quarter. But I, I agree with Andrea, maybe the, you need to change uh, and be able to show that in your mindset, you were already able to change for uh, more focus on the problem statements and gathering all the requirements and talking about like what the value that this is actually going to bring and being able to speak with these and bring people in the room to this mindset as well. Uh, if you're able to prove that you can talk and think more on this perspective than uh, in the previous roles. We're probably closer to the to the breakthrough as well. Um, I think that uh, we do have this super other interesting question uh, here that we uh, talked about, which is the technical PM. Uh, I already saw uh, the TPM uh, questions uh, popping up mm -hmm. here. So, how technical this uh, technical PM actually needs to be? Sure. Uh, I, I would like to take this question uh, and, and, you know, put it very briefly. Um, it, it is kind of very much, you know, important, at least in, in my role being as a platform PM. Uh, but like Andra kind of mentioned it earlier, like you shouldn't be getting too much into the weeds, but you should still concentrate on your product, uh, you know, manager skills at the same point. However, uh, as, as a PM, you will be having a vision of a product and a roadmap built for your upcoming features. And being able to understand the technical architecture behind those features will, will better guide, uh, you will be able to better uh, guide the team, the dev teams. Especially when you are in a funding discussions, trying to de-scope de an existing feature, or, or, you, or you may be providing some valuable inputs on reusing the existing uh, architecture for building up a new feature. So these are the scenarios where you would be adding to your team by being, uh, you know, by understanding the technical concepts behind those those features. Some basic understandings. You doesn't have to be like, you know, doesn't have to sit down and start coding, but you should have basic understanding on of like how to scale for a traffic, right? Or a database sharding. How does it work? What is the reliability? What is the availability of the product? Or th these kind of you know concepts you have to understand. So that will help you. Uh, you know, communicate better with, with your dev team. The most important thing, you know, which I feel as a product manager, you be between your LT and your dev team is you are able to communicate the technical aspects to your LT in a in more of a, you know, LT understanding way, like, you know, uh, giving them the insights or the highlights of what's going on rather than go, getting into very technical way. So you you will be that bridge. So you, uh, you know, if uh, as, a, as a platform uh, PM, I would say technical understanding and being technical is important. Mm -hmm. yeah. Nice. Um, let me maybe jump uh, to another one because I also think that we do have something here uh, during our dialogue. I, I kind of connected also the tip that we just shared, which is uh, all, what we should do back uh, in the beginning of the call, we were talking like what we should uh, maybe do to uh, shine more or something like this uh, and the types of PMs. And I can see that maybe perhaps the four of us, we took advantage of where were our strongest skill sets. And then we went for the PM uh, role that would better benefit. Uh, whatever we were doing before becoming PMs as well, right? But perhaps there is more uh, that we can also do. Uh, Annie, what do you feel that uh, since it's super competitive, uh, the industry is not getting super bigger and bigger and or in a growth uh, rocket right now, um, what do you suggest for 
the people to get like more uh, notice for the recruiters or how to land this first PM role? Yeah, and I know, uh, Adam, you had expressed uh, frustration with the lack of movement, right? And so that's really typical. It's very hard right now. Um, and I do see there's a lot of demand for PMs as well as product marketers, but that demand has slowed down quite a bit, right? Um, I'm not saying that in the future it will, it will get worse. It'll probably get better, but right now we're in quite a bind. Um, so my strategy is to focus on each step of that recruiting process. Sometimes we jump from A to Z to think, well, you know, I see so many other people get their dream jobs. Why not me? Why is it so hard? So you've got to break it down. So the first step is applying. How can you apply better? How can you match your resume better to the demands of that job? Um, and so focusing on that, getting some training certifications under your belt will help you uh, augment what you might lack in experience. Um, and then secondly, how do you augment or like multiply your ability to apply? Something that's worked really well for me is working with external recruiters. So people that are working at uh, reputable search firms um, who are contracted by employers to place uh, hires. And so these people I found to be really helpful if I've built relationships with them. They'll come to me and say, hey, I have a couple of new um, jobs that I want you to take a look at. Would you want to be submitted? So all of a sudden, you're not just applying by yourself. You have someone else looking out for you, and that's going to help. And then third, really focus on building your community. I try to think of making friends rather than networking, right? So in the product school community, uh, make relationships with people that are in the same boat, people that have made it um, or have been a little bit more advanced and use those relationships to see if they can help you land those interviews better, to prepare for those interviews better. Um, you might encounter the same themes of questions that you don't feel very strong about. So maybe there's someone out there that can help you get input. Uh, something that I like to do is get some feedback as well. So have a buddy, rehearse your, um, do some role playing around interviewing. Uh, when it comes to homework exercises, get feedback, um, get really smart people to help be in your corner and cheer you on, but also like get you through that interview process. So over time, you should have more callbacks. You should land that HR uh, call really well. That hiring manager call should go nicely, right? Because you've done your research, you're prepared. Um, the peer interview will be a snap. And then once you get to a panel, you have uh, more confidence because you've done it before. So it might take several, 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 several jobs or job interviews to land that one that you really want. So um, I know it's, it's a tough road, but uh, you can definitely get there if you focus on how you can improve at each step. Uh, one thing I would like to add to what Annie said is uh, a lot of times candidates have like one resume for every job. Uh, I would definitely recommend looking at the job description properly going through the details of the skill set required and the what, what the product is actually uh, uh, asking, the hiring manager is asking you to be, and then uh, highlight only the skill sets which are relevant to that job. Uh, go that extra mile to update the resume for a particular job uh, rather than just using a one generalized resume for every job. Very 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 cool i love how any were able to break down this problem which is like how to land my role as a proper pm as well right which is like take it step by step and then you have action items for each one of these steps if it is your uh probably your cv that is you probably want to get some feedback on it and improve it or the interview and also take into consideration that uh career change uh it happens it this is a topic by itself career change entering the tech industry is then a nuance to it so there's a lot of good content also that i would uh, also suggest for people that want to change your career you know prepare your mindset prepare yourself to maybe take a step back and then uh take it uh forward later in your career uh so having these preparations as well um regardless if it is the tech industry it's there are also like amazing tips out there uh, for it and uh this is uh, why am i saying this because for example interview 
multiple people, even to land a senior later. Uh, you might want to you might struggle with the interview step of it. So have a buddy, rehearse the main uh, questions, get this feedback on your communication skills and how you're answering those questions. Uh, I'm 100% sure that uh, this will uh, speed up you in your process to find and land this very wanted uh, PM role. Uh, maybe I know that we are reached uh, the latest one, but I found the late the last uh, question that I want to close. Maybe our panel uh, is a nice one that uh, Jessica asked, which is like, what do you think? Uh, that what do you find the most rewarding, or what do you like the most? What brings you joy uh, in the PM career, guys? Uh, I can start and pass on to Srikant and Annie. Uh, the most joyful experience as a PM in my day to day is the amount of impact I'm able to bring to the organization uh, and also get to understand the pain points uh, from different uh, stakeholders during the day. It's a very fulfilling process when you see that, okay, this is something which a person or a team is struggling on on a day to day basis and you are solving a problem for them and making it easier. So when I log off uh, uh, every day in the evening, I have a sense of accomplishment and satisfaction that I've made someone else's job easier. That's that's very good, Andra. Um, I, I will touch upon the, you know, like a rewarding. Um, most of the rewarding doesn't come directly. It's always indirect, like Andrew was mentioning. Like someone reach out, reaches out to you for a, funding a particular item, but your team is already occupied with so much work. Uh, you find out a way to de-scope something and then pull this item into, into the team. And end of the day, that person is so happy, that team is so happy that they're able to launch their feature. You are actually helping them. Uh, and and in turn you are rewarding yourself. So that that moment you will feel like wow yes I did something and you know it's a good uh, uh, you you can log off for the day which it technically won't happen but yes that that is something you can do. <laughs> mm -hmm. Annie, what about you? Yeah, I would add uh, when sales becomes your friend. <laughs> so sometimes salespeople <laughs> might not care about the product that you're you're trying to have them sell, right? But when you have a great idea, when you help them figure out how to sell, get more comfortable, and then they see success, they see demand in the marketplace, demand in their customers, um, you feel like you're onto something. And then you're, you're going to see customers that say, I love your product. And that, to me, is probably the most rewarding thing that, that you'll see as a product marketer, probably as a PM as well. So, yeah, it's that uh, validation uh, that you get uh, in your internal stakeholders as well as external in the marketplace. Mm -hmm. Cool. Uh, people, it was amazing to spend this time with you. I think that we can wrap this up. Thanks for uh, everybody that uh, participated in the comment session. Um, have a great night or day, depending on where you are. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks, everyone. Thank you.